So continuing on from the last build, we did finish the bed box uh, and painted it. We are moving on to the internal structure. So this will be the studs and the frame for the whole truck camper itself. I'm working on the arches here. There are four total and I went with arches so that it'd be better for structural support of the roof, aerodynamics and wicking water when it rains or snows. The way that I achieved the curves was to measure the endpoints on each side and then like you see here bend a piece of wood that I could trace along and get an even enough curve. It wasn't an exact science but I think it turned out okay. It looks pretty good. After all the rough cuts were made with the jigsaw, I took it over to my belt sander and cleaned everything up. This really gave it a smooth surface and made up for any imperfections I had from the jigsaw. I then moved on to the studs of the frame. Uh, I was going to create a mortise to hold the arch pieces in so it would be one cohesive piece. So to do that I took it over to the table saw and cut pieces out. I believe this is called a kerf cut. So you cut small little relief cuts in the piece uh, and then you're able to knock out those pieces and use a chisel to clean up uh, the rest of it which gives you a nice little pocket for the arch to fit in. I am by no means a fine woodworker. <laughs> this is probably one of the first times I used a chisel, so bear with me. Uh, it, did, it did get the job done, but it's not the prettiest. After all the pieces were cut and in place, I temporarily uh, clamped them all together to make sure everything was fitting correctly and everything was square uh, before gluing and screwing everything together. While I let the paint dry on the bottom of the bed box, it was time to mill up the lumber for the siding. So I ended up using uh, cedar fence boards. Uh, these you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's, pretty cheap, it, but you do have to uh, wait a little while for these to dry out. They come rough cut from the lumber mill and they are usually really wet. So you try to find the, the ones with the least moisture in them, uh, but you still need to bring them home and let them sit for a few days. Um, I had these ones for about a week before I actually milled them up and I probably should have let them sit longer in the heat to dry out, um, but I was kind of on a time crunch. The process for milling all the boards to be ready to put on the camper was to uh, cut off the rough edges and bring it down to five inches long and then pass them through the planer on each side to give me a total board width of half an inch. I expected the milling process to take all day, but it actually went by relatively quick once I got a process going. I think I bought 25 boards initially, but I ended up having to go back and get another 15, and that still almost wasn't enough. I did not have much scrap left over, so I would suggest just biting the bullet and buying like 50 boards at once just to make sure you have enough and you have enough time to let them dry. Once the boards were milled down to size, I ran them through a half inch rabbit bit to give me the shiplap edge so the boards sit nice and flush together and allow rain to flow over the boards all in one piece. This is a messy process so be ready to clean up. Once the bed box had a full day to dry, I was able to set it back down and start installing the internal structure for the camper. So I used wood glue and two and a half inch uh, external deck screws, two of them in the bottom, uh, going up through the bed box and straight into the stud, uh, making a secure connection. I repeated the process for all the support struts and then I moved on to some side strapping. So they were one by two boards that I put in between the struts just to add a little bit more rigidity and then once the cedar boards are placed on the structure is solid. Uh, all the pieces tie together and make one solid box. This thing has taken a lot of abuse so far. Uh, I've taken it over 20 
500 miles in one trips across six states and uh, it did just fine, no sign of wear and tear. After the frame was fully together, I then installed the windows. These are some basic shed windows that I installed with screws and then came up with waterproof uh, appliance tape to seal up the edges. After the trim was on, I did follow it up with some caulking uh, to hopefully make it as watertight as possible. It is a wooden structure, so I do expect a little moisture to get through, um, but hopefully not be flooded out in the middle of the night. Once the windows were in, I could finally start installing the siding. So it is a shiplap edge, so the cedar boards uh, fit together like a puzzle piece, as you can see here, overlapping so that the water will run down the sides and not get into the structure itself. Well, at least I hope. <laughs> But for these, I did install them one at a time, <clears throat> making measurements as I went, uh, just because each piece is gonna be a little different from the one before it. I did use my brad nailer to initially install the boards and then followed up with one and a quarter inch deck screws to secure the boards permanently. Moving on to the roof of the structure, I did need to put a center board because I could not get a piece of plywood large enough to cover the whole surface. So I am making a little mortise for a half inch uh, piece of plywood to run between each of the arches. Uh, this will provide support for the plywood roof that I can screw into uh, where the boards meet. I was having trouble figuring out the best way to create the curve on the side boards, the cedar boards to match the roof curve that I wanted, uh, but I did end up using the jigsaw to rough cut it and then followed it up with my, what's that called? What, what is that blade called? That thing. I then went around all the edges with a flush trim bit on my router to get a smooth surface so that I can lay over the half inch plywood later on. I then laid out the half inch plywood, the two boards across the roof and screwed them into all of the arches and the side walls of the camper. Once the plywood was secured, I rough cut it with the jigsaw and then came back with the flush cut router to smooth out the edges. I realized I forgot to film the next part uh, installing the trim around the roof, but I just went around and cut uh, boards to match the roof line and then followed it up with the flush butt cut bit on the router uh, to prepare the roof for fiberglassing. I live in Arizona, so I had to do the fiberglassing early in the morning. As you can he see here, it's about five o'clock in the morning uh, when it's still around 70 degrees here. I laid out the fiberglass mat and covered it in the 
resin. Unfortunately, my camera battery died, so I didn't get the whole process. So here's what I got. The fiberglass resin made it so the roof was waterproof and one solid piece. Now it was time for staining. If you know me, uh, I do have to step out of my comfort zone to use any other stain than Jacob Bean, but I actually went with a different stain, a little bit lighter for this one. It was called Early American, and it is a uh, light brown and looks really nice uh, with the cedar wood. My fiance was nice enough to help me with this staining and polyurethaning process on this to get the camper all finished up. While the camper finished drying, it was time to work on the door. So I was really apprehensive about this part because I really didn't know what I was going to do. I ended up going with a Dutch door, so a split door that enables me to open the top half to let in some nice air, as well as open it over the tailgate because this camper is going to fit in the back of the truck bed with the tailgate closed. So I wanted to make sure I could still open it with the tailgate closed in case for some reason someone came along and closed the gate while we were in there. I didn't want to get locked in and have to bust out a window or kick through the wall. Did install another 12 inch window in the door. Uh, this allows me to actually see through the camper. Not well, but I could see behind me on the back of a freeway. I can't see a small car behind me, but I can definitely see a semi. To install the window, I did have to put 1x2 supports behind the window so that I could secure the screws because the door is only made of half inch plywood. Once the roof was completely dry, I followed it up with a gel coat of paint. This is marine grade paint that will be waterproof and just add another layer of protection to the roof of the camper. I then covered the camper and the door all in a protective layer of polyurethane and it was time to reinstall the hardware. So the hinges, doorknobs, handles, locks, everything that went into keeping this uh, camper secure and safe for us at night. All right, the time has come to put this beast in the truck. Um, I have it parked at the lowest point in the driveway, so it would be, uh, we don't have to lift it as far. That's the lowest the bed will go and then my plan is hopefully do some Egyptian engineering and use these PVC pipes to help roll it down the driveway hopefully not too fast but we'll see how that goes doesn't look so pretty Baby. We did it. We did it, huh? 
totally bad. Like swinging or anything. Weeeew! <laughs> I can see if there's a semi behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll work, babe. <laughs> <laughs> 